coffee. Coffee, it stimulates your senses so much. I mean, think about when you're walking in the morning to a coffee shop, the smell's incredible. Think about the combinations of duck and coffee. You can brine meats and vegetables in coffee juice. Shannon tells me that a lot of professional chefs actually use instant coffee because it's easier to dissolve and you don't have to sift it, and you still get this big, robust flavour. Velvety and rich. Yeah. So I choose a really rich instant coffee. I'm definitely going to Hero Coffee today and I want to incorporate chocolate into it as well because I love mocha. I really want the judges to have this robust coffee hit but I want it to be nice and creamy and not too overpowering either. Okay, Chloe, tell me. Yeah. So you've got the real bitterness of the semi frodo Yep. You've got then velvety, sweet textures of the chocolate. Yep. Then you need something to still have another contrast. You've got to take this dish from a semi frodo to a dish that if it's on a restaurant, menu has to be really up there when it comes to presentation. Yep. That's the only way you're going to get through today. Yep. Okay? So that's what we've got to think about. Thank you. I think that if I incorporate a meringue into it, I can elevate the presentation of my dish and it's going to be that little subtle crunch that this dish needs. And since I'm kind of doing a Bomb Alaska inspired dish, I'm thinking when the judges are served, they pour hot brandy on top, light it on fire. And it's just this cool theatre effect. So my dish today is called a coffee bomb. Okay. First thing I'm going to focus on is that semifredo because I need to make sure that it's frozen at the end of time. Chloe's doing really well. She's got a lot going on, but she's great at desserts and they're spectacular. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens. Once the egg mixture for my semifredo is done, I whisk in the ground coffee. And once I'm happy with the colour, I gently fold that through my cream. You guys want to want to come down and give me a hand, or <laughs> we'd love to. Morgan's speciality is flavours from the deep south, and there's nothing more deep south than a red eye sauce. I mean, it's got bourbon, it's got bacon, it's got coffee. I think this is really suited to him. Come on, First thing I'm going to do is get my cauliflower on. It's going to take at least 45 minutes. I've got to cover the base of the cauliflower with some foil just so I don't burn the bottom of it. I'm tilting the pot a little bit so I can just baste it back and forth. And basically, I'm going to be doing that as much as I can. That's one. <laughs> By the time we finish this, it'll be like perfectly cooked cauliflower. Oh. Yeah, nice. Once it starts getting golden brown, we'll start slowing down the, the temperature. At Bell's or Chicken, it usually takes us an hour, an hour and a half of someone constantly basting the cauliflower. Today, I only have 45 minutes to make sure that I have cooked cauliflower. Yeah, you've got to move, man. 45 minutes! Time's ticking and I need to start my sauce. What is that? It's a cof coffee liqueur. For my sauce, I'm basically going to make a really thin ganache and I'm going to then stir my coffee liqueur through that. I want it to be really indulgent. I mean, that's not too sweet, which I quite like, but it's going to be about the contrast, depending on how sweet the semifredo is. Yeah, I think it's going to work really well. OK. I really need to do something really incredible to get another pin today, so I've got to step it up. Come on, Chloe. Come on, Chloe. Hey, Morgan. Yes? Why do they call it red-eye gravy? Um, because red-eye meaning, like... You're hungover. You're hungover. Yeah. Or you've got to use coffee to get yourself going. Red gravy is a southern complement to dishes that you usually have with ham. So basically you'll get country ham and they'll always dip it into some red gravy. But I'm going to make a modern version of it and serve it with some coffee crusted quail. I start with sweating off half an onion and a clove of garlic. Then I'm going to take two rashes of bacon, cut that up into small pieces and sweat that, get that bacon oil really out, cutting inside the pot. Then I'll deglaze it with some bourbon. Bourbon's a great thing of the southern cuisine. <laughs> From there, I'm going to add some coffee. Instant coffee has that real strong bitterness of coffee flavour, which I'm going to need to give my final result. Oh, look at the colour of it. Oh, you can smell the coffee. I've put a lot of coffee in here. I maybe should have used this measuring spoon. Now that I'm tasting it, I'm a little bit concerned about the bitterness. brandy ready to pour over my meringue at the end to light it on fire. So now I just need to pipe that meringue onto the semifredo. So close. Looking at it, it doesn't look right. 
but I have to use this meringue because I don't have time to make another one and I'm just hoping that it hasn't split. Morgan, 30 seconds! Oh, come on, Chloe, 30 seconds! Hey, come on! Chloe, keep the shake, Chloe. Keep the shake, keep the shake. Quail with butter poached cauliflower and red eye gravy. It looks wonderful. Yeah, doesn't really it? Nice. Very simple. Very, very simple. Very simple. You know, it's about three ingredients here: quail, cauliflower, and that sauce. Mm. And I reckon it's going to be a cracker. We know cauliflower and coffee is a great combination. This smells just delicious. Oh wow. It smells good. Oh, I'm excited by that sauce, just, just the smell of it. Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Kick in there, isn't it? That's got a bit of punch in it, isn't it? That sauce. Mm -hmm. It's like something I've never tasted before. Yeah. That sauce is really interesting and it's bitter and it's got a spiciness to it, but the cauliflower is just yum. It reminds me that simplicity can be a beautiful thing, so very little on the plate. Uh, it's all about that sauce. And I love the intensity of the coffee and then that chilli hit that you get afterwards. And of course, then you get that soft, buttery cauliflower that's roasted and caramelised. It's wonderful. Really yum. Coffee bomb with chocolate sauce and brandy to flambe. Go on. Go on, flame it up, George. I just want to have a quick squeeze out the meringue. Looks a little broken. Mm, it does. Which won't help it. <laughs> wow. Is that still burning? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Brilliant. Well, we got a little bit of a flambe there. Certainly about the coffee. I mean, you know, now I've tasted it and I've put it yeah. down. You know, I'm getting great flavour of coffee. It's subtle, there's the right amount of sweetness in that ice cream. This chocolate box is the most exciting thing I think I've seen all year. It's so awesome. Kirsten likes layers and textures, and so my mind instantly thinks of trifle because, you know, you've got different layers, different textures in the cake and the jelly and the cream. I'm going to do a coconut sponge, coffee jelly, a raspberry marshmallow, some fresh nectar in, and a rum caramel. Traditional trifle has whipped cream through it, but I just want to take it a little bit left of centre and use some marshmallow and custard instead. So today I'm making a sort of trifle. I'm still trying to figure out the best way to plate this dish. Behind. I need to get this layering right, but I just want to try out some different techniques and just make a bit of an impression with that. The dish I have in mind is a fallen ice cream. So we'll have a twill cone. It comes from just the classic idea of an ice cream cone that someone dropped on the plate. It's gonna be a bit shattered, a bit messy, but I'll just have all these little interesting bits here and there. I'm really excited about this challenge. I love making desserts and really hope to be tasted today. Ryan! Hi, George. How, How are you? excited were you? Oh, hey? I still can't believe it. It's a bit crazy. That looks beautiful. What is so that? I'm, making, I'm going to smoke the anglaise later. It's a rum and coffee ice cream. Yeah, and yum. I'm, I'm just going to keep it really simple. Can you? No, 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 no. Yeah. Can you keep it I, simple? I will really try it. Like, just well, nail a few well, elements. What's your well. definition of simple? Give us the, what's the Four, dish? Four or five elements maximum. <laughs> <laughs> Not simple. <laughs> 
So I've actually finished all my main elements. I've got my ice cream in the freezer, my jelly has set. I've got my chocolate powder. I've got my fresh raspberry portioned out. I take the tweezers out of the oven, they are perfect. They're burning hot, but I really need to start shaping them as soon as possible. So using some cone molds, I shape them into little ice cream cones. My fingers are burning, they really hurt. <sighs> because twirls harden with the first minute of taking out, I have to sacrifice my fingers. Kirsten tasted my dish, that would be really amazing. She's an amazing dessert pastry chef. So I've cooked up fallen smoky coffee and rum ice cream with a coffee twill coffee jelly, raspberry marshmallows, and a salted roasted white chocolate powder. Great balance of textures. The cone is really nice and crunchy, so when you snap into that and you get the ice cream, when you put it all together, absolutely beautiful. I think that's properly good, like absolutely delicious. I love every element that's on the plate. I was really worried about that coffee ice cream. I thought, you know, if you're using instant coffee, the risk is that it's much too bitter and too strong. Bang on, like delicious, really well done. You've done a wonderful job. I mean, really, really wonderful job. Thanks, Brian. Thank you. Thank you. The next dish we'd like to taste is Eloise. Oh! She's <laughs> trying desperately hard not to drop it. Gee. So, Eloise, what's your dish? Um, it's a sort of trifle. So, <laughs> I've got some coconut sponge soaked in a rum syrup, raspberry marshmallow, coffee jelly, and a creme patissier. I think that would qualify as a trifle. <laughs> I was Not a say, sort of trifle, I'd go like with a, a confident yeah. trifle. It looks fabulous. I tell you what, if, if that came out into a restaurant, everybody's looking and thinking, ooh. That looks so amazing, you just want to dive. Yeah, it's great, isn't it? <laughs> really good. That is an absolutely winning dish. The sponge, the texture of the sponge, just the bang on sweetness of that beautiful coffee syrup, coffee flavour, the raspberry marshmallow. That is delicious. That is a diet busting hell of a dish. I think you've absolutely smashed it. I could have eaten the whole thing myself. <laughs> You're giving us some hits, aren't you? <laughs> I mean, honestly, week four, and you're just bashing out great dish after great dish. That's a Another cracking, great, delicious, yummy dish. So, Eloise, <gasps> well done. Thank you. This is so amazing. I love it. What an incredible view of Melbourne. My photograph today is a beautiful black and white photo of this gorgeous coffee shop down Flinders Lane. So that's inspired monochromatic dessert today. It's going to be lots of different textures of black, dark chocolate, coffee, blackberries. Oh, it should be really delicious. I love taking my kids to the cafe and I love ordering donuts, you know. I love getting my coffee. So my inspiration from the photo is to actually make Nong Kong, which is um, Cambodian donuts. I'm going to serve it with a uh, coffee ice cream. Hey, Linda. Yo. Do you have instant coffee? Yeah, here you go. Thank you! No worries. These donuts are not easy to cook. They need to be made to the right shape and cooked at the right temp. If the donuts are made too thick, it could be raw on the inside. If it's too thin, it could just be a crispy batter, and that's not what you want either. Things are not going right for me today, but... Finally, I've got my donuts in the deep fryer. How long do we have? You know, I'm looking at the clock, I'm looking at my deep fryer. I am praying that my donuts will cook in time because I need to glaze them as well. Oh my god, my donuts are cooked perfectly. They're nice and golden. Hey, I take one, I dip it into the glaze, I pull it out, and it's nice and glossy and golden. And I'm like, yes, they're finally turning out. I check on my ice cream. It is no way me set. I can't serve that ice cream. 
What's the ice cream? Um, it's a coffee ice cream, but with the time that we have left, I don't think that's going to happen, so... You got a plan I'm... B? I've got to think of something else right now. Yeah, iced coffee. Vietnamese iced coffee. OK. Yeah. You said that and you went like... You, you did a little flex then. That was a Linda flex. <laughs> <laughs> The concept of my cook today is all about the whole cafe scene. I'm going to make a Vietnamese iced coffee to go with my donuts. Scott? Yeah? So are you still using the instant coffee? No. Thanks, mate. Thank you. Thank you. Vietnamese iced coffee, it's so good. You have to be generous with the condensed milk. I mix it all together, I taste it. It's got that bitterness from the coffee, that nice sweetness from the condensed milk. I just hope it's good enough for the judges. I've got to get this done. Yes, buddy. Whoa. Oh. Holy moly. <laughs> so there's an aerated white chocolate, blackberry coolie, fresh blackberries, and coffee chocolate mousse. One of the things I love about Melbourne is the beautiful bluestone pavement in the streets and alleyways. It reminds me of an aero bar, and I used to love them growing up as a kid. Anise flavour from the licorice, the tart flavour of the berries, the, the depth of flavour from the chocolate. They, they're not flavours that I would put together, and yet I kind of like it. Well done, mate. Well done. Thank you. Things did go to plan today during my cook. The first thing that came to mind was Vietnamese iced coffee. I'm actually really worried that this might be too simple. And what I've got here, it's called Nom Kong. It's Cambodian donuts and Vietnamese iced coffee. Shall we? Linda, I think it's safe to say that no matter where you are in the world, we're all missing travelling. And so it's those little dishes that transport you. These are flavours and textures that are synonymous with joy throughout an entire region of the world. That glutinous flour, that chew, the pull, that kind of gooiness that it gives on the inside, surrounded by this unapologetic crunch on the outside, and then that beautiful palm sugar flavoured caramel on top, dusted with the, the sesame seeds. It's very, very simple food, but it's food that's really meaningful. And you've done it beautifully. Thank you. Absolutely beautifully. Thank you so much, Mel. Wow. Just the texture of the donut is is absolutely epic. You've got to be happy with that, haven't you? I am. You've nailed that. And there is some sort of good spirit floating around here for you that didn't make your ice cream work today because that is so much better. Thank we you. want it the way that it would be, and that's how it is, and that's why it's good. Thank well done. Thank you so much. Thank you. What are you making, Jess? Um, I'm going to make a coffee and chocolate semifreddo with crystallized coffee, a coffee coated crumb, and a coffee buttercream as well. I was just doing wonderful, and I was just very confident. Where well, she's a little bit chubby, I, I'm sure she's enjoying it over here. I spoon in my semi-fredo mixture into a tray and get it into the blast chiller to chill. It's important to get that straight to the blast chiller to set. What are you doing with the chocolate? The chocolate is already a coffee um, parfait, like a semi-fredo, like ice cream. With the ice cream? It's ice cream. It's in the freezer already. Are you sure you got time to make the ice cream? It's already done. There's so much at stake today. Only the top three dishes will be tasted today and the top dish will get a chance to cook to be fast tracked into finals week. I so badly want to like do my best today to get that advantage. It will definitely make my mom really happy and proud of me. So overall, I really want to do my best. Make it nice, okay, Jess? Yeah. So I'm doing a coffee parfait with a chocolate and chilli sauce. And I'm going to maybe work on a chilli coffee granita. And then I'm going to use the coffee beans to make a twill. Right? Nice. You got a best friend on the balcony. You do a bit of showing off. Best and you might win. She won a duck, but <laughs> she gets up. Thanks, Dad. Look, I'm not using the duck, but I think Hannah would like this dish because she definitely loves coffee and I'm using a lot of coffee today. When you're done with the coffee, you can just pop it up here. <laughs> so far, I think I'm on track. Um, I've got my coffee infusing in some milk for the French coffee cream. Um, I've got my crumb on the go now and I have to make my crystallized coffee. My dish today is only four elements. I need each element to work to get my balance right. This is, um, I'm making my French coffee buttercream. 
Um, I'm making an anglaise and then I'm going to cool that down, whip it up and I'm going to add the butter and that'll be the base of my French buttercream. Are you sure you don't need to put more coffee? More coffee? No, later. You don't want it to overpower. Then I add in my butter a little at a time, but as I'm adding the butter, it's starting to split. It split. The butter is just solidified. Oh my um, god! I what, know. I don't know. You can't can... let that. Don't let your mum see that. I know. She'll she be can't really, see she'll it. She'll be really upset. If she sees that. <laughs> Come on. I'm trying to salvage it. It's so ruined. I'm not sure how I can fix it. I think I'm just gonna have to ditch it. Today is definitely the day out of all days I didn't want to ruin anything, especially in front of my mum. Hey Jess, what are you throwing that away? Yeah, it didn't work. The butter solidified. Just have to do something else. At this point, I have literally three elements in my dish, just the semifreddo, the crumb, and the crystallized coffee, but there's no other creamy element to tie it all together. I can't wait to come home and, like, have a dinner party now, because, like, I'm so much better, like... I can't wait either, because I'll be able to eat food again. <laughs> my coffee parfait's in the blast chiller, so now I'm going to move on to making my coffee granita and my chilli chocolate sauce. Are the chilies hot? I'm going to try it in a sec. I'm assuming they're hot. They're, there's bird's eyes and reds. There's definitely a risk of using chilli in a dessert, so today I just need to make sure that the balance of chilli is spot on. I try the granita mix and I can taste the chilli. I really love chilli, so I think it tastes delicious. So, oh, it's got chilli in it. That's good. So, Rich, this is your chilli sauce, and this is going to what, decorate the plate? Yeah. I have chilli in two elements, so... Mmm. Two elements? Two elements. <coughs> <coughs> Do you need a water? Oh. Matt, stop! Matt's just nearly died on my chili. <laughs> Got it. Got it. <laughs> if my dish has too much chili in it, I'm concerned that it will just mask all the other flavours in my dish. So I'm just second guessing the chili chocolate sauce. And the moment you say coffee and chocolate, I'm going, yes, yes, yeah. yes. And if you said chocolate and chili and then went down that route, I'd be going, yes, yes, yes. And my concern is that you don't want to derail yeah. deliciousness because yeah. you're trying to be different. Yeah. Chili's not working in this dish, so I need to replan what I'm going to do. Instead of serving the chili chocolate sauce, I'm going to change it just to a simple chocolate sauce and remake a granita with no chili in it. I haven't got really much time left, so I'm just doubting how it's going to be completed in time. Only five minutes ago, and I've ruined my French buttercream. Just going to make a simple coffee Chantilly cream, and hopefully that works out. It's not as good as the French buttercream, but it's better than nothing. Hopefully it turns out OK. Chantilly cream is basically cream and sugar whipped up together, and you just get this nice, smooth texture. Just put a little bit colour or something, Jess. It's too plain. Yes, Mum. <laughs> She's stressing me out. My second batch of coffee granita is in the blast chiller. I'm just hoping it freezes in time. I have a taste of the parfait and I'm really happy with it. Yes, mm. what have you cooked? Um, it is a chocolate coffee semi freddo with a coffee cream and crystallised coffee. Awesome. Your mum brought the uh, chocolate. She did. <laughs> <laughs> mum, what do you think? I've never tasted that one before, but it looks nice. <laughs> nice presentation. And I like the simplicity and I like the idea of the little coffee praline. Coffee and chocolate, they're a brilliant combination, and what you've given us is that brilliant combination. But I love it because it's not sickly sweet. You balance that out. It's a lovely dessert, and it's OK to put three things on a plate, three things that are done really, really well, and that's why we love it. I love the simplicity, and it is an absolute crowd pleaser. You put that on any menu, and it's going to be one of the best sellers because it is what it is. It's coffee and chocolate. And I love the fact that you've made a coffee cream for a change rather than trying to smother it with granita and ice cream and trying to be too clever. Classic, understated, perfect. How far you have come, Jess. 
since those days when you put 200 things on the plate. Um, I think we love, we love this, this newfound confidence and clarity that we're seeing from you. Well yes, done. Coffee parfait, um, I did a coffee twill. Um, I've got a crumb on there, some coffee granita and a chocolate um, sauce. And you not only decided not to cook with that, you also decided not to cook with chilli. I had the chilli in there, but I thought I nearly killed you. <laughs> I cut it out and started from scratch. I, Really wanted to like push the boundaries a little bit as I like to do normally, but I think I was trying to get too creative, so I just cut back a little bit, kept it nice and simple. Creativity um, has no place on a plate if it's not delicious. Yeah, exactly. So what's that little? Oh, the granita is really melting quickly. Yeah, yeah let's go on. You didn't manage to get a lot of the granita, did you? Um, no, because I made it in the last 15 minutes because the original one had chili in it. I love duck. So do I. <laughs> but I like coffee parfait better. <laughs> um, that's really delicious. And I like, best of all, I love the texture of that little parfait. It's really silky, it's really smooth. It's quite heavy, but in this case, it's delicious. And the cleverness of that little crisp shard of praline is really wonderful. I, I love it. And for me, I don't, I don't need the granita. In fact, the fact that the granita's melted into this lighter syrup is, is quite delicious. Beautiful. It's yum, it's great cooking, and that's why you're in the top seven. Race, well done. Thank you. But the real triumph is that, absolutely, you could, you could make windows out of this <laughs> praline, it's so fine. Um, it's absolutely beautiful, well done. Coffee. Cherry and coffee are a combination I've never made before together. I've drank coffee and I've eaten cherries, so I know what they taste like, but never together. I have the cherry and the coffee today as my two ingredients, and I'm going to be doing a cherry shaboost with a coffee granita. Tom, what's the shaboost? It's a creme pat with Italian meringue folded through it. The shaboost itself is quite creamy and light, so I need a refreshing element, and the granita is perfect for that. Oh, I love coffee. How is it, Connor? Tastes like your morning espresso. <laughs> I love coffee. I have it every single day. So if I go hard on the coffee. Oh, yum. I'm really happy with it. So it's going straight into the blast chiller so it can freeze properly. You've got this, buddy. Thank you, hon. The colour's insane, Connor. It looks epic. Cream pads are really creamy and Italian meringues are really light. So that's what you're going to get when you bring those two together in a shaboost. I just love the idea of heroing the two ingredients I was given and I don't want to steer away from that. With my shaboost, I want the cherries to be really prominent because coffee's quite strong as a flavour. Looking good, mate. There it goes. Yeah. Whisk it. <laughs> oh, my God, the gym is coming back to bite today. <laughs> I take the creme pad off the heat and I whisk through the gelatin really quickly. I mean, we've missed the boat, but hot tip, there's electric whisks in the pantry. I know, but the hand is where it needs to be. <laughs> Once the Italian meringue comes together, I whisk a little bit in and then I fold the rest through. Nice one, That's Connor. Beautiful, Connor. Thank you, guys. How does it taste? The creme pad itself has this beautiful cherry flavour to it, but I've added the Italian meringue and folded it through and it's lost some of it. You right, mate? I don't think I've got enough cherry into the actual boost. My coffee granita is going to overpower the entire dish. You right, mate? I really need a third element that here is cherry as well. Oh, my God. Cherry syrup. When in doubt, whip a syrup out. Beautiful, mate. I think that's a really good idea. Yeah. Hopefully, this cherry syrup amplifies the cherry because I need more cherry in this dish. Connor, cherry and coffee. Yes. I've made a cherry shaboost with a coffee granita and a cherry syrup. All right. Shall we?
I love coffee. Like, I really love coffee. The Granita is really good. A nice amount of sugar in there. It's super, it's like the ristretto of coffee Granitas, though, and therefore, I cannot taste cherries in there at all. The Granita was a triumph. Possibly one of the best Granitas we've had. Fluffy, supercharged with the flavor you've chosen. Fantastic. But the Chaboost was a letdown. If you'd have just mandolined some cherry over the top, it could have been a top contender. Seriously good. That's got yeah. great bones. Yeah. That's the only reason that isn't at the top of the pack today. Yeah. Can you can you feel what I'm saying? How close you are? Oh mate, I hear you so loud and clear. <laughs> Cheers, thank you so much, guys. I put my spoon in the panna cotta and the chocolate sauce and I get this kick of coffee liqueur that is full on. Yep. <laughs> but delicious. It's delicious. Melts in your mouth. Mm. And it's not that sweet. It's soft, it's silky and smooth. The sauce is rich. It's typical Nigella stuff, that luscious, bold, sensuous flavour. I pour out 125 mils of espresso and I combine that with 50 grams of sugar. Exactly 50. The recipe is really specific with what you have to do and I'm really following it and I'm making sure that I do it the exact way. I then need to add my cream and my salt and bring it all to a boil. Harry, how's it Hi, going? Rachel. I don't want to... I'm feeling good. Yeah, I'm feeling really good. I'm doing my panna cotta now. I'm on track. Fantastic. Yep. <laughs> Thank you. My panna cotta mixture has come to the boil, so now I need to strain it and cool it down before I can put it in the mould to set. This recipe says my panna cotta mixture needs to be completely cool, and I'm going to follow that recipe, so I'm going to whisk it until it's completely cool. My panna cotta mixture's come up to the boil. Strain it into a bowl and then whisk that over an ice bath. The recipe calls for this panna cotta mixture to be completely cold before you put it in the mould. But time's ticking and you've just got to get things moving. So I check to make sure it's cool enough. It seems to be a bit warm, but I'm not as precise with everything today. So I'll put it in the mould now, into the fridge, it'll cool down there. And within 15 minutes, so there's at least 40 minutes for them to set. Be confident that'll be enough time. One minute, three dishes, one minute. Yeah, come on, come on. I haven't demolded my panna cotta yet, but I need to make that anchovy sauce for the lamb. I'm going like mad. 30 seconds! Come on! Let's go! Chloe, come on, panna cotta! I have panna cotta. Where, what are you doing? Come on, Chloe. Come on. Come on. She's put a bit more, I mean, there's a lot yeah, anyway, but it's a bit more. Run. Nice, though. Oh, yeah, really nice. It hasn't got that absolute smoothness that a panna cotta no. should have, mm. but I know it's a uh, small quibble because it's not, it's not completely off. Yeah, it's minimally off, rather than it being sandy or anything really mm. problematic.